Hi guys, it's Trevor here from Astro Backyard, and um, you may have noticed my latest image of M51 where I said that uh, I added some luminance details to boost detail and uh, contrast in the image. And I just wanted to show you how I did that in Photoshop. So here we're looking at um, my M51 from 2014. Now this was shot with um, an 8 inch Newtonium reflector. And uh, it's actually quite nice um, other than the uh, gradient issues you're seeing here. So we'll fix that up first. And this was actually shot from a dark sky site, so I really couldn't I couldn't get an image like this from the backyard, which is kind of sad, but uh, that's the way it is. So I think we'll try gradient exterminator first to um, deal with this the gradient issues here. Um, let's just I have a copy layer here. Let's see how it does on its own. That's not going to do it. So instead, we'll try Astro Fat Flat Pro. And that's from the makers of the Astronomy Tools Action Set. So I've got the sliders here for smooth, smoothness, edge cleanup, and dark noise reduction. So I think for an image like this with the uh, galaxy isolated in uh, an area of basically open dark sky, um, the Astro Flat Pro works really well. Um, I don't want to overdo it here with that black level. But I think it's an improvement for sure. So I, I won't spend too much longer working on that. Uh, so we've got our color base image here. Let's see how big we're looking at. 2500 pixels, so it's nice and big. I think I'm actually going to have to scale it down. Um, so let me just... I was going to reprocess the, uh, the mono image here, but this is this is where I was at. Um, so first of all, let's see the channels we have here. So we're just going to pull out the, uh, I've set it the mode to lab color, and I'm just going to grab the um, lightness channel, since this is a mono image and we don't need any color channels. And I'm just going to paste it on its own. We'll get rid of this one. So this is the stacked mono image um, straight from Deep Sky Stacker. It's about two hours uh, worth of data on M51 from my light polluted backyard using the uh, monochrome Altair Hypercam 183M. As you can see <laughs> I had some issues with my flats uh, and it's driving me a bit nuts so I'm just gonna fix that up. So here I've got the clone tool or the healing brush I should say uh, and the mode is set to replace and then by holding down Alt I can choose an area of sky that I want to replace um, the area in question that was spoiled by my flats. It looks like indentations or bubbles, but really it's uh, it's so Deep Sky Stacker was trying to remove the spots, the dust on my uh, sensor, uh, but it was slightly off, so it's creating this, these weird. Uh, really looks like uh, just indents. Um, this is such a hack job, I'm just doing this real quick. Um, the key thing to remember here is I'm just going to be using the uh, luminance details of the, the galaxy in the center of the frame, so all the issues with uh, going on around it aren't, uh, aren't such a big deal. So let's just get this going. As you can see, it's some really sweet uh, details. Um, using this mono camera for two hours is not a long time from uh, from the city. I am impressed. So for this uh, black and white mono image, I'm just going to do some of the same things I would do to a color image as far as processing. So I think I'm going to run the local contrast en enhancement. Let's just make a new layer. And so it mucked things up a little bit, but uh, we're not going to have that layer at 100%. But I do like the uh, increase in contrast that it's done to the galaxy here. 
Next up, we're going to create a new layer and we're going to run Enhanced DSO and re Reduce Stars. This is one of my favorite actions. Should see a big difference in the before and after. It does take a little bit longer though. Okay, it's done its thing. So it's done a good job of reducing the stars. In this case, I'm not sure it added a whole lot to the structure of the galaxy, as you can see me turn it on and off here. I actually think I'm... <laughs> I am going to uh, get rid of that action, and then I'll just do some quick uh, star reduction, and then that will be it. And then we'll apply this to the, uh, the color image. So a quick way to reduce the stars is to select color range, highlights, and then uh, change the slider here. And uh, just nicely around each star. I, of course, do not want to touch the galaxy, so I'm holding down Alt with the uh, lasso tool here. I'm just removing this from the selection. And now I'm going to select Filter Other Minimum. And because it's a new layer, we can toggle it on and off. And it made the stars much smaller. See them on and off there. Uh, and I think we'll set this to about 50%. Yeah, that's nice and uh, it's subtle, but a difference. Okay, I'm just going to flatten the image now. I'm going to uh, just adjust the uh, black point here a little bit. And it is a bit noisy. Like I said, this is um, it's, it's only about two hours and it's a, it's a passively cooled camera. I am going to run um, just a quick noise filter here. This one's um, easy noise reduction from uh, the team at photographingspace.com. They have um, action sets that were, they're more designed for um, Milky Way photography and wide field stuff, but uh, I like running the actions, um, I like the noise reduction action here for uh, Deep Sky as well. So uh, check out photo photographingspace.com for those actions. Okay, flatten my image here and uh, bear with me. So we're going to copy the image. I'm selecting Control A, Control C. And uh, actually before I do that I realize I think my scale is going to be quite a bit off. So I've just pasted the layer on top here. Oh actually not bad, it's closer than I thought. So I've just set the opacity down so I can see the layer on top. And now I'm going to rotate it and you can see yeah, we're, the, our mono image is a little bit bigger than the color. So we can scale it down. I'm holding the shift key here. And uh, like I've said many times, stars make great registration points. So it's, it's uh, pretty easy to line things up manually. It's just a matter of scaling and rotating. And uh, I do this a lot when combining two processed images with each other. You want to uh, combine the data in a creative way you can have lots of fun with this method. Okay, how are we looking here? Getting very close now and I'm using the arrow keys to make subtle adjustments. And you kind of have to look at the uh, image as a whole, the stars on the outside and the inside. Don't get too focused on one area or uh, it'll make it hard to line up. Okay, I think we're really close. I'm going to hit enter and how I like to check is I go right in and then I turn it off and on. And it looks like it hopped up a little, just a little bit there. So I'm going to push it down. That's the one. I'm not going to get too crazy with this um, for the sake of the video. So right now we've got the, the uh, two images on top of each other. The mono on top. So here it is at 100% opacity. And remember we're going to remove all of this uh, 
the surrounding sky. We just want the details in the galaxy. Uh, and let's see. I need to move this a little bit. We're pretty good. Like I said, I won't get I won't get crazy with this. So the trick is to set the blending mode to luminosity. So when I say adding a luminance layer, that's what I mean. I put a layer on top that's just grayscale and set to luminosity mode. So here it is at 100%. And you can see the glow it adds to the galaxy. Uh, but we don't, that's a little aggressive. So we'll go down just a little bit. And now I'm going to use the lasso tool again with the quite a wide feather of 18 pixels here and I'm going to select around the galaxy I want to get the faint details at the edges too and I'm going to select inverse and delete everything so now we've just got the luminance layer on top isolated to the galaxy and to get it even more precise I'll use the, uh, the soft brush here with the uh, opacity set to uh, 35% and I'm just going to feather out the edges to properly blend it in. Of course uh, these videos I, it's, it's pretty rushed. Normally you could really take your time with this but I think you get the idea. And it's quite a bit noisier on top, um, but uh, again, we're still the opacity is set to 59%. We're still going to make some some more adjustments. So there's the before and after. Just cleaning this up a little bit more. So now let's crank that up so we can see it. And I'm actually going to change the brightness and contrast here. I'm going to up the contrast down the brightness. I felt like it was a little bright. And then I'm going to use the good old sharpen. So if you can see the difference in details there. So there it is without it. And there it is with it. You can see the, uh, just look in these areas here in the, the, the tendrils. Do you see that, that added detail? So I've turned it down again. Okay. And look at the, the sharpness of the stars in this area here. You see what I mean? So that's the subtle difference of adding uh, luminance details. So I'm going to turn that back down. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't think we're totally aligned here, but uh, you get the gist. Okay, so there it is with the added luminance boost, and you can turn that up for a little more intensity. Um, some more work could be done with the uh, the noise reduction of that luminance layer, and it's to be quite honest, I'm, I think I over sharpened it. Um, but let's flatten the image here. Another trick I like to do. Um, so by scaling the entire image down, we're going to get a little crispier but uh, obviously lose some resolution. Just checking my black levels a little bit. And so now I'm just gonna, I wanna sharpen the, uh, the feather down to five. I wanna isolate some areas that I wanna sharpen. And again, normally I would take much longer to do this. Let's get that. And I'm just copying that selection, sharpen, and then I'm going to turn that down a bit. So I don't want to sharpen the image as a whole, just uh, those particular areas. And then you can do some other things like um, boosting the uh, saturation. So again, we'll select the galaxy, and on this copied layer, boost the saturation and vibrance. So it's getting really, really blue. So 
so that's that. That's uh, adding luminance um, data from a mono camera, um, two different telescopes. Here was the, uh, the more final version I posted, and let's see how close I got. Yeah, it's comparable. This one's probably a little bit nicer. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a good Friday, so I got the day off work. I'm glad you stuck around to, uh, to watch it, and I hope you learned a few things. Thanks a lot.